Hi, this is Yanni. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to use the filter function. So the first thing we're going to need from the filter function is an array. So I have this action over here called arrays. And here you see it's got a bunch of IPs in it. I'm just going to hit run. So we have that initial event data. Here we have all of that information right here. Great. Uh, what I'm going to do next is pull in an event transform so we can do our filtering. And I'm just going to pull up plus and then value. And then I want to grab the filter function. The filter function is going to ask us for whatever array that we want to look at and then whatever lambda that we want to use to test. And uh, in that lambda, we're going to set the item name and then we're going to use an expression. So let's go through that. So let's add the array here, which is arrays.ips, do comma, and then add my lambda. So I'm just going to set the value to i just to keep it really simple. And then for my expression, I'm going to do includes. Includes is similar to trigger where you can do a contains, but with includes, we're essentially going to get a true or false return if it's there. So it's going to ask me for my target, which is i, and then the value that I'm checking for. Um, let's actually grab one of those IP addresses. So we have a quick example. So I'm just going to grab this one randomly. And in quotes, this is going to be my target. And I'm just going to add closing parentheses. And then now you'll see that the result is here. Let's say you have an array with a little bit more data. Over here, I have this other one set up with people where I have name, place, and URL. And let's say we wanted to make sure that we got all the people that were in London. So here we have Carol, but maybe there's, there would have been a couple other people in the list. Uh, we can also use our filter. So I'm going to grab my event transform and I'm just going to run this once just so the event data is waiting for me. Let's go ahead and connect this. And in here, I'm going to plus and I'm going to do filter. It's going to ask me for my array, which is arrays dot people. And I'm going to do Lambda again. And I'm just using I just because I feel like it's really easy. I can be anything. It can be, pe it, it can be the word people. It could be any word you want it to be. But I just like using I for just to make it really simple. I'm going to do includes again. And then I. And then we would do London. Right? But it shows no results. But we know London's in there. That's because we need to go further down the JSON path. So right where this I is right here, I can do I dot place. And now London shows up. One thing that's really important to note is that if there were other items in this array, so if it wasn't just Carol, if there was Bobby and Hank and Sarah, and they're all from London, they would also show up here in the example. So it's not just limited to one item in the array. It's for however many items in the array that meet this criteria. So this is the value that we're setting the baseline to. And then here we can reference as far down into the path as we need to. So if it was uh, originally, if we look at the array, it is arrays.people.place. But if it was dot place dot region or whatever it is, you can go down as far as you need to. Uh, so this kind of makes it a little bit easier to go through and I'll just go ahead and re-emit my last event. And now we'll see in the event data, we'll see Carol. Now, if you wanted to not have this set as text and you wanted it to keep its object orientation, we can just go over here where this value option is and we can change it to formula that will make it. So when this runs, we'll keep that structure. We hope you enjoyed this and we look forward to seeing you next time.